this is a proven scientific tested method. You should make and quantify the number of decisions you make a day, and they should be used to make big decisions if you want to be a big boy or girl. And you should leave the small decisions to the people underneath you so you don't waste that mental bandwidth of making the right, right. big decisions. Welcome to The Remix, the video podcast that keeps you in the mix of everything real estate. I'm Noelle Freisen and... I'm Eric Anderson, and we are so excited to be here again today for another episode where we can teach you all kinds of stuff about real estate, about how to make money, about how to better use your time, and all kinds of cool stuff like that. So today, we have an amazing special guest. We do. Uh, who's going to teach us about how to work in three hours a day, how to make your life simple, I guess, and how to, how to really capture your day and enjoy life because you've compressed all your work time into three hours. Now, I don't necessarily I don't know that, that I can do it, <laughs> um, but we're going to find out soon. But anyway, um, introduce our panel. So, of course, we have our power panel. We have Omar Sharif, who's our flipping and investing expert. And we have Nima Ameri, who is our what I call my legal eagle. He is our law expert. I'd like my name changed to resident troll. Oh God, he is a resident. Oh, here we go. And like to troll we have, all you people watching here because you're spending your time watching us instead of making money. Well, but they have only. But you they, only, they only have, have to work, work three hours, hours a day. <laughs> Listen, I, I already know uh, Mr. Williams' secret. He picks a big pile of cocaine oh, in the middle oh, of his oh, office oh, oh. and says, "All right, everyone's got three hours before they burn out. Be okay, productive." Wait, let me introduce. Sorry. Let me introduce. We are here today with a great expert, Nolly Williams. He's a real estate expert who turned per personal development, who's turned into a personal development leader, correct? And you have this amazing process of only working three hours a day and then living the rest of your life the way you want it. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here. Uh, you know, you guys, you guys are exciting. You, good energy all, <laughs> around, all around. It's only been two minutes. Yeah, you haven't gotten that, to know That's us usually yet. all Eric needs for people who realize how exciting uh -huh, he is. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, Nolly, tell us about your background. How did you get into real estate? And what led you to search for this kind of personal and work-life freedom? Yeah, so the, the three types of freedom that I teach are, uh, you know, you want to have financial freedom. And that is the ability to live off of just a portion of your income. And, um, you know, you also want to have time freedom. You know, one of the big problems we have in real estate is we just don't have enough time to do everything. And then location freedom is a big, a big one of mine. You'll notice right behind me, I actually have hurricane shutters. Uh, I saw that. So it's blocking. Uh, I don't know if you see that. It's blocking my tropical view. But I, I live in Puerto Rico. And uh, last week I was on a podcast. I was in. Actually, it was in Tampa area last week. Thank God, you know, let's pray for them. Um, but, but the, you know, the ability to work from anywhere in the world. And uh, a lot of real estate agents don't realize that in, in our craft, we have this freedom. We have this ability. So how I got started, um, I've been an entrepreneur since a very young age. I was about 12 when I first became an entrepreneur. That's a, that's a story in and of itself. But my dad was an entrepreneur. My mom she was, uh, she, she was, a, she would punch the clock. She, she worked, she was a W2. She had her master's degree in psychology and she was a social worker. I liked the way dad worked better. He set his own hours. He did it the way he wanted to do it. Nobody told him when to clock in. And I just liked that. So from about the age of 12, I knew that I would be an entrepreneur. Uh, fast forward. Um, the last time I had a W2, I was 23 years old. And uh, I'm 52 now. So I've been 30 years without uh, a W-2. And I've worked for myself. I've, I've enjoyed every minute of it. I started in the music industry. And I started that first company with $1,800. And within about four years, I was uh, we were bringing in $150,000 a month wow. in that business. Wow. Um, now, I did have, uh, I had 14 employees. I had uh, $42,000 a month payroll. I mean, it was, it was an expensive operation. And, um, eventually I, you know, I made my first million when I was 29 years old, I actually made $2 million that year. 
And um, by the time I was 33, I was broke, <laughs> flat broke, couldn't make payroll, um, the music industry tanked. And I was like, what am I going to do now? And I sold my house on 10 acres just outside of Austin, Texas. Uh, and I sold it for half a million dollars back then. This was in the, in the, uh, about 2003. And, uh, when I saw the commission that I paid the real estate agent, I said, well, wait a minute. Well, maybe right. I can- You're I- like, I want to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's how I got in. I, I, I didn't know what I was going to do next. And, and the, the cool thing about real estate is for the majority of most, most of my coaching clients, uh, that are in the real estate field, um, they did something else before real estate. And that's me. You know, I did something else before it. And, uh, but when I got into real estate, I knew that listings was the name of the game because I read a red book called the millionaire real estate agent. Uh, I took it to heart. I took 21 listings, my first 74 days in the business. And, um, my first 10 years in the business, I took over a thousand listings. Uh, listings is, has, has always been sort of my thing. Um, you know, focusing on sellers. And that that was from from you know day one. So that that's kind of been my trajectory. Um, I you know about 2015 is when I got into coaching. I love to teach. I'm a teacher first and foremost. I love to teach, train, coach, uh, speak, anything that has to do with helping people achieve their greatness. That's what I love to do. And um, you know, I created a system in, in my business that just allowed me to accelerate without having to trade a lot of dollars for time. Well, you know, I, I'm a systems guy. So when, when I, when I disc test out any, any I, I study pro personality profiles. And so whenever I test out, you know, all the tests point to the, the idea that I should have been an engineer. Um, I, I think that would be boring. I, I, I don't think I'd love that, but anyway, um, so I, I'm very analytical. So anytime that I, in, with anything that I do, I do dissect it. Now, when I was in the, in the, uh, record business, I, I worked all the time. I mean, I was probably working. I mean, I worked all the time, you know, uh, I loved what I did <laughs> until I didn't love it. <laughs> and that's another big problem, you know? So, yeah, I mean, just like any entrepreneur, you think that what most entrepreneurs believe is that the way to success is the hustle and grind, but that's only, that's, that's only what you need to do to build your business you don't have to hustle and grind for the rest of your life. So when you were getting, I mean, are you in residential or commercial? But before we get there, can I, can I be yeah. back? Can I, can I be back up? Over three hours a day in sure. residential. All right, all right. Yeah, so, impossible. so this is my question for you, right? First of one, I already like you, so I apologize if I'm offensive in advance, but. Bro, it's how, just Nima, don't worry about how, it. How do you go from making $2 million a year, right? To seeing a commission check of, 25,000 bucks and half that is 12.5 and being like, oh, I really like this. Like at 2 million bucks a year, 12, 000, looking at a $12,000 check, I'd be like, yo, this is some bullshit. Like what a waste of time. <laughs> like why wouldn't you turn back around and rebuild your business? You know, I mean, I know well, 2003 was Ja Rule, yeah. but. <laughs> one word, I got one word for that, burnout. Okay. See, what, most, what most entrepreneurs don't know uh, and nobody tells them this is that when you get into whatever profession you get into, let's talk in real estate, um, there's a burnout factor and you can only, you can only stomach so much until you actually do burn out. And so most people, when they get into uh, real estate and, and e I'm talking ultra successful, high volume. So my last year in production, I did 153 deals. Okay. So when you, when you're talking to a person that's high volume, you know, that's, that's the problem that, that we tend to face any entrepreneur really so what happens is when you get in the business you're delusional but eventually you become disillusioned okay so for me even though i was making a lot of money i had a lot of expenses i was making 150,000 a month spending 160 and a lot of people don't realize that when you that, that's why when you look at let's say a professional athlete they might make they you say man that guy just got a 12 million dollars like three years ago how could he be broke that doesn't make sense you know um we were i was at the point where i couldn't i couldn't understand 
how a person could live on less than 30,000 a month, because that's what our income had dwindled down to from 150 to 30,000. And that's really what got me out of the business. I, I didn't have the, I didn't have the fortitude to continue, if that makes sense. No, that, I just didn't that, 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 that's actually exactly what I was getting at, right? Because like, you know, hearing your story, you built a thriving business. So it wasn't necessarily the industry that changed. It was the business model that 99% of the rest of the population lives by, which is first in, last out, and you you know you only make money if you can out survive everybody else, that you were like, I've just had enough of this, and you couldn't keep up with it. And then you saw real estate as, wait, this is low overhead, uh, percentage-based return, and scalable. Would that be a more accurate dep depiction of how everything broke down for you in like early 2000s? It would, but it, but also another thing happened was that the music industry shifted. Everything went digital. So I had to reinvent myself. And I, I just and, and you'll see this in real estate. You know, a lot of the agents jump out of the game when 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 the market shifts. So for me, the market shifted. And I was like, crap, do I do it now? What I, a smart thing to do in hindsight would have been just to reinvent what we were doing, take it all digital. But that's hindsight. I'm looking at it like, well, wait a minute, this guy, I just paid this guy $30,000. He did nothing. I, I don't see. <laughs> hey, we I do don't a see lot. what he did. He and, did a lot. And, and I'm like, plus he doesn't even have a staff. He doesn't have 14 sure. employees. That's his money. I said, well, hmm, that might be. And so, so, but, but typically I would sell anywhere from six to 10 homes a month. So I was still a volume guy. Um, and you know, I like I like to have good income. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't I for for our listeners, successful people, right? If you take statistically speaking, if you take any successful business person, don't look at the business they do because they say that you can put them in any business setting and they will thrive. And that's kind of what right. we're hearing from Noli here, where he went from completely different businesses and it wasn't the business necessarily that made him thrive, but his ability to create systems, scale and understand, understand the machine he was operating and make it the best machine possible. Well, I want to get into this system because yeah. I know as a residential real estate agent that you are getting calls all day long into the night and into the early morning. You have so much to do for your clients. And if you're selling, if you're having listings with that type of volume, you can't tell me that you were able to whittle and also train your clients to whittle everything down to three hours in a day. So let's get into this system. Tell us about it and tell us how this works. Yeah. So the reality is in, in my real estate practice, I was working probably three hours a week. In that <laughs> business. Okay. Well, right. Are you hiring? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so here, so here's when, when I got in the business, I hired a coach. I was eight months in the business and I hired Julie as my coach. Uh, and she, she was a Mike Ferry coach and she, um, and, and I was in, I was completely overwhelmed. I did. I was, I was working a lot of hours uh, and, and I, but I was doing a lot of business. I, I took on a lot of right out of the gate. I, I started doing a, a volume business, but I didn't know what I was doing. And so Julie told me uh, during one of our initial coaching sessions, she said, what is your goal? I said, my goal is to do 40 deals a year that, you know, reaches my numbers. I'm good. She said, Nolly, let's make it a hundred. I said, that's crazy. That that's, that's insane. I don't want to work like that. I've already done that. She said, Nolly, let me tell you something. If you will commit to do a hundred deals a year, you'll work half as much as if you do 40. Why? I didn't understand it. Didn't I don't understand it either. Whatever. But, but, but I trusted Julie because she had more expertise than I did. So I just bumped up my goal. And by the, my second year in the business, I did over 80 deals. By my third year in the business, I was doing uh, over a hundred deals a year. Um, by 2009, I was ranked number seven in Austin. Texas, uh, there was 9,800 agents in the market. My production ranked me number seven out of almost 10,000. And uh, that was by Austin Business Journal. They publish every year. So, uh, and lo and behold, she was absolutely right. Because here's what I did in my, in my real estate, residential real estate practice. I took every single thing that I do and, and I wrote it down uh, and I rated it from a scale of one to five. Okay, this is the Amazon system. Okay, one means I hate it. Five means I love it. So it's a it's a five scale system. All right. So I wrote every single thing that I do 
and I gave it a rating, one, two, three, four, or five. And I resolved, this is within my first year in the business, I resolved that I would only do fours and fives. Now, another thing I discovered was that in, 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 a, in your real estate practice, there's 40, like I have a system that's 46 steps. Okay, I wrote a book called uh, Success with Listings. It's uh, almost 400 pages and it, it breaks down the system, but there's 46 steps in a, in a residential real estate tr transaction that's a listing, okay? Now, what I discovered was only three to five of those steps require a license. The rest of them do not require a license. So and you can delegate fact, it out. 91.3% uh, of all real estate transactions are, uh, or the activities on those transactions are administrative. They're to support the transaction. So what I teach is that you should only be working on income creating activities or income producing activities. And income producing activities are activities that create fresh and new income for right now. That's called now money, cash flow, or they create future wealth. And if you only focus on those two things, now, what are those two things? So, so all it is, it's like Pareto's principle. 90% of the things that you do right now in your real estate practice are, 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 are only getting you like 10% of the results. And there's 10% of the things that you're doing that are getting 90% of the results or 80%. And so what I teach is that you focus only on the big picture priorities. There's only two of them. And you delegate everything else to someone else. So that that's great. By the way, and really and yeah. I see, and I see that, but I think the question is, can you start out that way? Because obviously if you're new no. in the business, no, 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 so no. What, what, at no, what no, point no, do no, you, be, so what, what, at what point do you get to, to that point where you're, you're delegating? And, and if you did a hundred deals a year, did that start at, you know, deal 40 after you learned it or, or where, where did that come into play for you? You, you have to. So what I believe is that when you set up your business and you create your goals, you should set up your operation as early as possible to hit, to hit whatever scale that you want to be. So in other words, your systems, the system that you set up today should match the system that you're going to have. It, you know, it, the overarching system should be the same when you're doing a hundred deals a year, 200, 300, or like some friends of mine that do a hundred deals a month. Okay. I have a friend that lives you know, about 40 miles from me right now, she, she does 1700 deals a year. Okay. And she, she hardly works at all. So it, it, here's the concept. Think about it this way. If you had, if you owned a McDonald's restaurant, just think about this for a second, let's take it out of real estate. Cause the reason why most people can't think about this in context of real estate is because they're in the weeds. They're in the minutia. Uh, they're, they're what the way I look at it is let's say you're in a labyrinth, you're in a maze. Okay. And you, you're just going through the maze. All you can see is the next turn. You don't know whether to go left or right. Now, what I do with my clients is I, I bring them 50 to 60 feet above the maze. Now you can see every single twist and turn, just like you're a genius. But you're living outside your business, not in your business. So let's take the McDonald's example. If you owned a McDonald's restaurant, only one location, and you just got started, how much time would you be working? 80 hours a week all the time <laughs> 80 hours a week now let's fast forward two three years maybe maybe four or five years you've got 13 locations 13 mcdonald's okay you got them in different cities you got 13 of them how much time are you working now 20 hours a week. very little right very little because you've Why? gotten because good managers and you've delegated out you got 13 restaurants you got 13 managers okay every single manager had you know you got a group of three people that manage the 13 and then you got one person that the three report to. So when you when you scale your business, you're only ever reporting to one to three people. So it's it's about what the three hour the three hour work day or you know what I call three hours a day. Now the way it starts out is it's a work day within a work day. So here's how it starts. It starts by you carving out three hours of your eight hour day, or it could be ten hour day, whatever your day is. And you're working three hours only on the stuff that's going to move the needle in your business. Okay. Which is, only, which is only a couple of things, by the way. It's not the majority of the things you do. It's just a few. Um, and then eventually, as you learn to delegate, which is most people have never learned how to do it. They don't know how to train. They don't know how to 
Uh, they don't have an operations manual. They don't have. They don't it's also operations. hard to let go when it's your baby and when you love it. And it's something that you've created from nothing. It's hard to let go to someone who, you know, like I know I look all the time and I'm like, no one can talk about this school as well as I can. No one mm -hmm. can represent it as well as I can. You so. can't grow without letting sure. go. And you can't grow without letting go. Thank you. We'll coin that. Yeah. <laughs> nobody does it better. It's like Carly Simon. Nobody does it better. Uh, no one does it half as good as you. I thought you were going to sing for us. <laughs> you know, here, here's, here's the reality. Here's the reality of that. When I looked at it in my business, um, I thought I was, you know, Mr. Hot Stuff. I was doing over 100 deals a year. And then it occurred to me, okay, how many deals are actually being done in Austin? So that year when I looked at it, there was 24,000 transactions. That means there's 48,000 sides. Okay, 48,000, you know, sides. Okay, 48,000 transactions. Or, 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 or paychecks were paid out. Now, even though I was ranked number seven in the city and I was doing a hundred plus deals a year, I only did, you know, like, I think that year I did 112 deals, whatever it was, but there was 48,000 deals that happened. So apparently I'm not the only one that can sell real estate. And when we get, when we get out of our own head, you know, sometimes the enemy is the inner me. When we get out of our own way, and we start to do business at a higher level, then we then we thrive. I mean, today I have 327 agents and they're out there, you know, doing I, I spend one hour a week coaching them. OK, as a group. Um, and, you know, there, again, there's only two big picture priorities and it depends on where you are in your business. So it starts out with a three hours within your 10 hours. Eventually, you're working six hours. Then, you now all of a sudden you're working five. And then you're only focused on your three hours that are that are really the only things that move the needle anyway. So Noli, question. You have to trust. You have to let go and you have to get over trust issues. <laughs> we, we work on that too. So so can you can you help us understand or describe the structure you have when you set up this process for agencies? Because with McDonald's, you're giving someone a business that they run. But what are you I'm guessing in, in your model, you're the rainmaker, you're providing leads to your agents. What is it that you're providing the agents to have 300 agents working with you and closing the, closing the high volume transactions? Well, even, even let's say, let's take it back away from high volume because not everybody wants to do high volume. High volume is just the way I think. Okay. But even let's say today, even, even now I still make six figures in real estate. Um, I'm selling less real estate than I ever have. Uh, but I still, I still, make, you know, let's, let's say 120 grand, you know, that, that it's not what I was making before. Cause that's not my focus. This is just deals that, you know, here and there. So, uh, but to do that, I might, I might work in real estate like four hours a week, if that maybe not even that much. Okay. Um, and so, but, but the way you do it is you have to, so, so you don't, this concept doesn't mean that you have to have a big team. Okay. That I want to, I want people to get that out of all you need is a good administr you know, administration person, an admin. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, and I have four of them. They're, they're all virtual assistants. Um, but you have to have a good admin. Sometimes you'll have to have a licensed one. Depends on where you are. Uh, so you'll have a, a really, really, really good admin and yourself. Sometimes you'll have more than one admin. But that's all it takes. You've you got a, t a team of you plus maybe one or two people. It doesn't have to be a big team. So do these admins, do they have to buy into your system? Do you teach them your system? Do they get to work three hours a day? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do they work three hours a day? Yeah. I, so I, I created a system that's 46 steps. And the majority of the things in those steps, the, you know, like step one is to generate the lead. All the way to the final step is to close the transaction. And then there's five steps that happen after closing. Right. So, yeah, you, you got to teach your admin people the things that are in their wheelhouse, the stuff that but but truthfully, if you've got a good admin, they should be coming up with what I call your team operations Bible. See, most people don't hire because they're just not they're not organized. They're not good leaders. They're not good at hiring. They don't know what. First of all, they don't even have know how to put together a JD, a good job description. Um, and then they don't know how to train their people. So, you know, they basically suck in that area. So what happens is they hire somebody and then they end up taking pieces of the, of the job back. 
right? Because the person was never trained. If you've got a good admin and you train them correctly, they should be able to come up with what I call a team operations Bible. Um, and that's, uh, so it's a seven step process that I teach. Okay. So, uh, and, and it, it takes, a, it takes a while to teach this and to learn it all, but it, but it is seven different steps that you go through to get to the three hour day. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. It, it might take to answer your original question. It could take a year, two years. Some of my clients take some take nine months. It, it just depends on how quickly you can adopt the system and implement it into the different areas of your business. Um, it's, it doesn't happen overnight. So you're working okay. this three hour, you're working this three hour day now. So what, what do you, yeah. what is that? What, what doors are opening for you because you're spending this three hour day? Are you now using the other four or five hours of your day to go uh, swimming, you know, in Puerto Rico, or are you using those days to open new businesses? What, what are you doing? So, so I, so basically I teach a thing called the life abundance wheel. And the life abundance wheel has four, there's 14 life areas. Okay. Um, and that, that's a whole nother topic, but just the, the main emphasis of it is that there's 14 areas to your life and business and work is just one area. So I spend my time exploring the other 13 areas. In fact, I have a checklist of, of things. A lot of it, you know, there's personal development. It's having fun, free time. The other thing that people don't realize is, is mind share. Like, for me, I like to travel. So we spend a lot of time traveling. I like to read. I like to write. I do I do a variety of things that are unbusiness related. They're not business related. But when you're writing and you're reading and you're mind sharing and you're meeting other people, doesn't that automatically turn into business at some point? Well, what what people a lot of people think that business and life are distinguishable. I don't teach that. I believe that they're it's all the same. You know, your, your, your business is just a conduit for your passion and your purpose. So when you came into this realm, you came here to, to be number one, we're human beings. You came here to do, okay. Something to, to, to have a mission and you came here to give. So that, so, so basically that's just part of your life. So my business, my income producing activities are just a conduit for my passion, you know? So, and that's where it kind of becomes blurred, right? But I'm signing up for your class. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. E I, I, I'm not even kidding. The, the, the stuff you're saying is just so on point and accurate. And it's funny. I hope that people who are listening can understand that. Look, there's so many of these teacher classes that are just bullshit, right? They right. are right, I agree. soft mechanisms or basic. These guys themselves are just a bunch of people who really never succeeded in life and then try to pitch you these generic things and their business is selling you shit. Um, no, right. what I'm, I agree. I agree. I'm what I'm sure. hearing, what I'm hearing from you, brother, <laughs> honestly. So yeah. just someone who, even as you're talking, I'm realizing like, you know, I think about some of the stuff you say and I'm like, wow, these are actually things that I know that I lack in my business mm -hmm. operations. And sure. it's, it's coming from a place of understanding you've lived it, you've crashed, you've burned, you've built it. Um, it's not this existential, you know, easy way of working for three hours. I think that's a misnomer. And I think when we started talking, we're all thinking, oh, how do we live this easy life of only yeah. a three hour day? It's not. You only designed so many Nolly. systems and Nolly, I apologize, and implemented so many processes that made it in impossible possible for him to fail because of a system of checks and balances, which permitted him to do in three hours what it takes most people probably an entire day and a half to do. That's And that ties back to what you said earlier about all of your testing being someone who's an engineer. I mean, this is like industrial engineering at its element, right? Designing systems. Yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm on, I, I, listen, I, I, I'm gonna sign up for your class. I'm telling you that right now. Um, <laughs> I think we should buy his book. <laughs> no, I'll buy, I'll, I'll buy your book. So I'll, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get you guys the blue, so I do have a blueprint for this. Uh -huh. It's a, it's like a roadmap and I'll send it to you so you can, you know, share it with, with, you know, to, to make it more, to make it make more sense. Where, where can we buy your book? Um, well, the book isn't out. The book isn't out. So, um, we, we have video. him, we have him pre book. Yeah. Pre book. We get to delve into this before it's out to the greater public. So listen, whoever's listening you to this heard podcast it here first I, I, on the remix, yeah. it, it doesn't matter so, if you're, I, mean, I have a, I, I have a couple of books. I have success with listings. That's on Amazon. 
Um, that's a national bestseller. This book here is about 380 pages, I believe, or maybe it's more than that, 440 pages, this book right here. So that th this kind of breaks down my process. Um, three hours a day, that, that book is, is, is your next book yet. management. Is that three hours a day, your management book? Right. Do you have yeah, to be in real estate to do your three hours a day or can this apply to all sorts of different industries? Right, right. it, it applies to it applies to any business. Um, and, you know, I have a three hour uh, a day boot camp. That's six weeks uh, that people can snap into to kind of do go they the only go for three hours a day. No, you. <laughs> the boot camp is like one hour a week. One hour a week. Okay, okay. Guys, okay. I, I'm telling I'm telling our listeners right now. I'm a multimillionaire, and I'm gonna read uh, this book. It doesn't matter if you're listening. If you're rich, poor, and different. If you got a dollar, you got ten. You oh. should always be trying to improve, and you should always be trying to do what you do better because yes. you can always do it better. You don't know better than everybody else. And it, all the people we've had on this podcast, love you all, but. This, I would highly recommend reading this book when it comes out, because if it interests me enough to read it, I spend most of these podcasts making fun of everybody, and for, including people even on it, right. right? But for me to actually be captivated and listening and to want to read your book, you know, guys, there's some truth behind it, because as an attorney, it's my job to judge people, mm -hmm. and you're not, right. you're not spewing bullshit, like, this is fact, this is science, you develop the science, and you're saying, guys, follow sure. this science, and you two can be successful. Love that. Nolly, this is really yeah. impressive. You'll never see Nima uh, going all fangirl on someone. So Very this is really good. awesome. <laughs> you, you Wait, what are we talking about fangirl now? <laughs> Don't make me talk about that hat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to ask him where the crocodile Dundee knife is next. <laughs> You know, it might take time to build a house and that that it might let's say you're building a custom home. It takes nine to 10 months to, to build that home, get it exactly like you want it. That's the hustle and grind. But after the home is built, you should be able to relax and enjoy your house. And what most entrepreneurs don't understand is that, yes, you have to hustle and grind when you build a business. But that doesn't have to be your modus operandi. That doesn't have to be your life. And you should be able to relax and let that business take care of you. Um, but there's a, you know, there's a lot to it in terms of how you educate your clients. I mean, uh, one of the things I learned early on is that your clients will, will do business with someone that represents you. Okay. True. It doesn't have to be you. And we believe like, it's just like, if you go to JC Penny, you say, Hey, I want, where's JC. So what do you mean? Well, I, I only do business with JC Penny. I'm here to buy a tie and some slacks, but unless JC Penny sells it directly, I'm not, not going to do business here. No, you have. It doesn't matter what works. It only matters what duplicates. So if you can't, if you don't have a business that, where you can duplicate your process with other people, then you'll never scale. And what happens then is you become you become the bottleneck to your own growth. Your own, the only reason why your business doesn't grow is because you don't have the, the bandwidth to take on more business. What I teach is let your business grow to as big as it wants to be. Because make no mistake about it, your business is, is, is an entity in and of itself. And it wants to be bigger than you're allowing it to be. Well, what was that point in life where you realized that? Hmm. Um, you know, I... I've, I, <laughs> I've been one of those that has been following like, uh, so I live in the quantum world now. Okay. And so I don't talk about it. I, I talk about it. Quantum world. Yeah. What's a quantum what's a qu world? I think you lost us there. Been saying you guys are your peasants. He doesn't have time <laughs> to live in your peasant world of peasant thinking. So, so what, what Nikola, what Nikola Tesla discovered was that if you, he said that if you want to discover the secrets of the universe, you have to think in terms of energy you got to think in terms of you, you got to think on the quantum level. So quantum physics is um, so Albert Einstein, I think it was 1942 or 24, one, one, some year. He um, he basically got a Nobel Prize uh, for for his work in quantum physics. And what he discovered was um, so. So the quantum physics is the study of matter at the atomic level, the subatomic level. So everything happens. Now, this is gonna, this sounds weird, but everything happens before it's it's in the unseen before it gets into the scene okay so what that means is that there's a lot of things that we can create within our business um at a quantum level not just at a, mm -hmm. at a practical physical level every most people think that uh, success is linear and it is because we live in a linear universe 
Okay. So A plus B does equal C. But what a lot of people don't realize is that when you put out the effort, when you put out the energy, the universe or whatever you call source um, has to reward that effort. Okay. And so when you look at nature, just an example, nature doesn't hustle and grind. Now I'm not talking about wild animals. Okay. The homo sapiens has a choice. Now, when you look at, uh, let's say even a hurricane, like there's a big hurricane just hit Puerto Rico. Now, now there's one headed to, to Florida. It, it, it's yep. just slamming Florida. Now, hurricanes don't hustle and grind. They just go. They flow. There's no, there, there's no work involved in that. That thing is just, it's just happening. You look at a river. You look at streams. See, everything flows. Even currency. The word current is in currency. Currency is made to, it's, it moves, it flows. And so that's how nature is. And I, I believe that our business can be that way as, as well. Does now you have to build it. Does a lion eat if it doesn't hunt? Well, you're ta- now you're talking about wild animals. So- <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it, isn't that yeah. nature? Does a cheetah eat if it doesn't chase a zebra? No, you, you have to see, but cheetahs don't, so what cheetahs have never figured out is how to farm. They don't know how to, how to, they don't know how to stay in one. See, homo sapiens never stayed in one place. We, we, we migrated with our food source, but somebody figured out, wait a minute, I can go to the grocery store. You I don't have to hunt. Did you watch alone where they drop these people off in Alaska? The guys who try to farm always drop off. Only the guy who kills big game hunting survives. I, I, I think what he's saying, what Nolly is saying is something that we've all said actually on this show. I mean, you talk about it all the time. You talk about putting all of your effort and all of that energy into what you do. Immerse and yourself. If you immerse yourself, if you put yourself deep in there, then that energy creates a life of its own and makes things happen. We've talked about that. No, I, th- I, I think not, not talking about the natural cycle of energy, just moving in a fluid direction and not being like not forcing it. Whereas I, I think that he's just at that point because he forgot about the days where he forced the energy. I think that he no, was the big saying, bang. That was the he created the universe. Energy he, created own, he created his own. No, he created his own. No, he enabled him to. He, he, he forgot. He, he created the big bang. Now he's going to sit back and enjoy the universe. But he did the big bang. Did you do the big bang? So, so, <laughs> so let's let let's look at it this way. So um, Henry Ford was the one that pioneered the eight hour day. Okay. Uh, back, the, back, our ancestors used to work 12, 15 hours a day. Why? Henry Why? Ford did an eight hour shift. His Henry Ford's yeah. factories were notorious yeah. for running all day long. <laughs> he did an eight hour <laughs> shift because he believed that people burn out after eight hours. And then he milked them to the extent that unions had to effectively be created. God bless Henry Ford. He knew how to run the factory. <laughs> and, and that was, that was during the industrial revolution. Yes. So now when, when, when your forefathers, that was eight generations ago. Now, when they, when they worked and toiled hard, what, what, why did they do that? Why, why? Because they had to eat, but what, why? They wanted to create a better future. Mm-hmm. Strong men make soft times. Soft times make soft men. Soft men. <laughs> There's a saying, right? We're living off of, we're feasting off of the plates that our, for, our, our grandfathers uh, and fathers made. Yeah. Our generation is going to screw the pooch. You Gen Z, you don't want to work. You want to do your eight, eight hour days and go home thinking like the work is going to get done and you're going to destroy everything they built. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. I'm not as optimistic as uh, Mr. Williams, but I know that Mr. Williams, he did that grind. He, did he built it. He can work three hours a day. The rest of you guys who are hungry. Guess what? The Eight fish hours. is not going to just come down the stream for you to eat. Well, and the point, the point, is, and, and the, I, I love it because the point is you got to build it. You yeah. don't want it. And, and you don't have to build what people have to understand. You don't have to spend 10, 20, 30 years building it. You don't have to, to, to spend your entire life like most real estate agents and die broke. Okay. You don't have to do that. There's another option for you. Now you should spend two or three years building the grocery store. Okay. But once the grocery store is built, when I need eggs, I go, I don't hunt. I don't, I don't go gather eggs. I just go to the grocery store and buy them. If I want, I I eat a lot of organic. If I want organic, I don't grow, I don't have a farm. I have an acre of land, but I don't grow anything. So you you have to realize that there comes a point when we have to, we we can't keep thinking primordially. Okay. Even though our brain hasn't changed in 300,000 years, our strategies can. And why are we working the same hours that they worked during the Industrial Revolution when that was 100 years ago? Think about this. Hundreds of years ago, actually. Think about it this way. More 
more breakthroughs have come in the last 100 years in every field than in all of history combined. You're talking about technology, health, you name a field where, where there hasn't been more breakthrough in the last hundred years. But what hasn't, what hasn't changed? The work day. People are still hustling and grinding. You don't You're saying to. it's time. It's time for a change to that work day. It's time now, to evolve. If you, if you believe you have to, and that's what you want to live, I'm cool with that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have no problem working. See, my, I'm good. You know, you want to work 15 hours a day, add to it. No problem. Right. When you were building your business, did you work 15 hours a day? Say again? Do, do you know anyone who has built a successful business from the ground up, starting out only working a few hours a day? That's not what I teach. No, no, I'm, I'm asking. <laughs> nobody, just to, yeah, yeah. nobody does that. Right. Yeah. Right. That, that, well, that, that's, my, that's my point, right? You spent, you did the grind, and your point is, and this is actually something I read in a book too, it's, it's called like the guide to happiness. It says a human brain is like a, it's like a calculator, and it can only process a certain amount of finite decisions a day. And if you waste your time using your brain energy, processing simple unimportant decisions, you don't have the bandwidth for the important ones. I agree. So I think what, we, yep. what Mr. Williams saying is- I call that mind share. Exactly. Okay. Okay. You, and this is a proven scientific tested method. You should make and quantify the number of decisions you make a day, and they should be used to make big decisions if you want to be a big boy or girl. And you should leave the small decisions to the people underneath you so you don't waste that mental bandwidth of making the right, right. big decisions. But you have to get there. That's right. But you have to get uh, there. Besides that, the homo sapiens brain is incapable of... of Focused activity for for more than ninety minutes. I've been telling my wife that ninety seconds, but she, you know she doesn't seem to accept it. <laughs> no, ninety minutes. Ninety minutes. Ninety minutes of focused activity is awesome. about the is about the maximum that the Homo sapiens brain can handle. Period. So I personally work two ninety minute shifts. You know, but 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 here's the thing. Here's the thing. What what, what gets you to the? It's just like if you write a, a book on investing. That's not a book for everybody. Okay, you you first have to learn how to make money and, you know, have save, you got to have money to invest. So the three hour, you know, three hours a day, I think anybody can, can, can utilize the principle because the principle, even if you work 10 hours a day, three hours of that day should be focused on just two big picture priorities, period. Okay. And you know, what you're saying is those big picture priorities should be the things that bring in the money that are moving your business forward. So yeah, if you are yeah. really devoting all of that mi mind power and all of that focused work towards making yeah. more money, then you're going to see the fruits of your labor. In, in real estate, we, we, only have, we only ever have two problems. Two problems to solve, ever. Okay, and that's really any, any business. Your number one problem is money. Your, okay. your second problem is time, period. So the, you solve the money problem through lead generation, okay? So if you, if, you don't, if, if you have feast or famine, you don't have consistent income in your business, you're not living off 40 to 50% of your income, then you got to go hunt, you know? And so what you have to do is you're going to focus on lead generation and appointments. Those are your two big picture priorities. You got 90 minutes every single day generating leads, and the afternoon is for, for appointments. But now, you said that you saw, you said that you put these on the Amazon factor. So what if lead generation is your number one? Like you didn't give it five stars. Yeah, if if you if you hate lead generation, then uh, you could be like Lance Loken. Okay, the guy doesn't like to do lead generation. He still sells twelve hundred homes a year. Okay. Who's Lance Loken? Okay. How does he do that? Well, he does it. So, so here, so, so the step one in my seven step process is to hone your superpower. Okay. Oh. That's the first step. Everybody has a, a superpower. Okay. Um, you know, as it's been said, everyone is a genius, but if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it'll live right. its whole life thinking it's stupid. So every single person has a superpower. Mm -hmm. You have to find out what your superpower is. There's a whole process for that. Number one, so your number one step. So if you can give us right now the top three things that, that I should go do today when yeah. I leave this podcast, is that your number one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Number, number one, you should hone your superpower because 
that that that's going to tell you who you need to partner with. If you if you're a person that doesn't like G, uh, lead generation, then you probably have an SC profile or CS on the disc profile. Um, and you and and now that doesn't mean you shouldn't lead generate. What you should do though is you should lead generate according to your personality profile. Okay. Now a a person a person that hates lead generation has a idea of what lead generation is because they've been taught maybe by a high D that they had to make cold calls. Okay. I've never personally made a cold call in my career ever, never made one. I still sold 1200 houses. So, so, so you don't, in, in other words, you, you, you basically find out who you are and then you wrap your business around that. Okay. Number one, hone your superpower. All right, number two, it, number two, you have to evaluate your business. You have to look at there's five areas of your business. You've got to evaluate where you are in those diff, on those in those different areas, um, and then you know you you basically that's a whole a lot. Again, these systems will take you nine months, a year, two years to go through, and then you emerge on the other side where all you're doing is the big picture priorities. So you evaluate your business. Step two, you balance your business. That's step three. Uh-huh. And and the way you balance your business, I teach eight pillars. So there's mindset, activities, people, systems, tools, money, accountability, and training. Those are the eight different pillars of your business. Okay. By the way, those are the same eight pillars that most franchises use. Uh-huh. Okay. Why why do eighty percent of restaurant franchises succeed when eighty percent of small business uh, restaurant fail? Because they have they're going off of something that's proven. They're just replicating something that's worked. Correct. Good point. Correct. And, it, and it's based on these eight pillars. So you, you, you make sure you, you, you know, you, you, that's where you basically balance your business. And I also teach the four bodies. Okay. As human beings, we have four bodies. We have a mental body, physical body, an emotional body, and a spiritual body. So you got to take care of all four. You don't take care of your body. Where else are you going to live? You know, uh, you, if you're out of shape, I mean, I'm in the best shape of my life. Um, uh, are you in the best shape of your life, Eric? <laughs> I'm not answering that question. You know, I, my my coach, I have a lot of coaches, by the way. I have a lot of coaches. I spend a lot of money on coaching because um, nobody succeeds alone. So you balance your business, then you delegate your business. That's step four. So you so you gave us your top three, even a fourth step. So this is very exciting. And uh, I've learned a lot today. I know, I know Nima has learned a ton today. I think Omar just... <clears throat> We're yeah, no, so overwhelmed. I'm absorbing it. You're on, you're on point, like Lima said, with a lot of things you said. In it fact, is, it is amazing to listen to. Him. Yeah, this reminds me of uh, a book I also read. It's called The E Myth. You may be familiar with that. Oh yeah, Michael Gerber. Yeah, yeah. It describes what you were talking Michael about. Michael Gerber's good. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And so, you're looking. Uh, and you're looking wait. at. Do you have kids? I don't. Well, there you go. Yeah. 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 There you go. <laughs> but you have only. Of course, you can work a three-hour day without. You kids. have twenty-one extra hours. Come on. If you have kids, you know you you you're gonna work. You're I mean, if you don't have kids, you can work as much as you want. Yeah. Nope. You got to work even more. So again, yeah. big yeah, picture. So that, that doesn't really kind of. Yeah, that doesn't go with 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 it. And by the way, it's not a theory. I mean, this is this is. You have to get to the point. This is reverse engineering. Okay, that I'm doing. Um, you know. I don't want to spend too much time getting on how I started teaching this, but the point is I just reverse engineered how I got here. I, I didn't start out here. I started out where everybody is, and, but I now teach that there's a different way if you want to, and you can go anywhere in between. Okay. You can do three hours a day, six hours a day, eight hours a day. It's up to you. Um, you could be extreme like me and just do three hours. I, I just, I just love the fact that you're looking at life from that big picture, you're trying to teach everybody to look at it almost like top down. I love that you're living in a quantum world, um, something like that. I mean, I'm a big visualizer, so I, I feel if you visualize something, you can make it happen. Uh, so these are all things that are. I don't know, bro. I still line. don't have abs. Yeah, well, because <laughs> you're not visualizing them. I'm visualizing but, them. You know, I think all I think I'm that is boobs. Mine. <laughs> I think that these are all amazing steps that I've learned. You know, getting older, and I'm two years younger than you. But uh, it, this is great stuff. So we You're really like appreciate You're like nine years older. Yeah, I know. Holy so it's the hat. I need a hat. Williams, where, if someone wants to find out more, if someone wants to take a class, if so, where can they go to, to find you? How can we stalk you? 
the the I say the best place is just go to nolly.com, uh K N O L L Y. If you can spell my name, that, that's hard enough. K N O L L Y. Yeah, nolly.com and you'll find like everything Nolly. Um, um everything Nolly. I love that. Everything, everything Nolly. Nolly. Yeah. I mean 90% of it's gonna be free. Um, so most people I, I've got like 700 videos on YouTube. Um, and and so I put out a lot of free content um just just to pay it forward. I, I just love what I do. I love doing this. And um, it sounds like an absolutely ridiculous concept. It sounds ludicrous, insane, ridiculous. And it doesn't even sound desirable for most entrepreneurs because they're workaholics. No, actually, I think if you really get to that point in mm -hmm. life, you actually want the three hour a day. So mm -hmm. um, I think that everybody here at this table is is I don't want a three hour day is agreeing with a lot of what you're saying. Um, Nima yeah, wants a yeah. zero hour day. No, listen, but, Nolly does really, no, Nolly, right? Nolly. Nolly. Nolly does really well, but let's be real. He chooses to have a three hour day because of work life balance. Yes. His net worth would be three times as more if he had three three hour sessions a day. That's the reality. But that's he can line. produce in three hours enough to maintain what that's he. That's actually false. That's a false belief. So Gary Halbert put it this way Who? Gary Halbert. It's, a, it's one of my favorite quotes. A walk on the beach, properly exploited, a walk on the beach could be worth, or, or one idea generated from a walk on the beach could be worth more than 10 lifetimes of hard work. There you go. See, the reason, the reason why most entrepreneurs don't get the big ideas is because they're in the minutia. They're in the shit. They're, they're shoveling it every day. But when you, when you separate, see, see I, 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 my wife and I, we, we travel to Europe. We go to Spain. We spend, I spend 50% of my time on vacation. That's God's honest truth. So what happens though, is when you go to other places, you put yourself into different energetic fields and you get ideas, you get ideas that you never would have gotten just shoveling shit all day. All right. That's, so that's I love it. So, so I'll be the devil's advocate here. I don't know Gary Halbert and that says something. Do you know Warren Buffett? Yeah. All right. He works a minimum of 12 hours a day. So I, while I appreciate what you're saying, a quote about a quote from a guy that, mo, that I haven't heard of, or has any of you here heard of Harry Herbert? It doesn't matter. I agree with but, him but here, here, because it's easy. It's, it's going with it. You don't it's, have $2 billion. Listen, I'm all about the system. I want everyone to understand that I will read because I'm all about the system. The only difference is I'm going to take a system and I'm multiply by three because I disagree with the fact that I, he I like can't that. work more. I like no, I get it. I get it. I, I, get I think, it. I think that you make enough money that you can live your lifestyle contently and you want to travel. You want to spend 50% of your time traveling. But if you, dude, what you built, if you grind it out nine to 12 hours a day, you just don't want that extra money because you don't need it. If you did, you would make more money. Yeah, but also you yeah, might yeah. not have the you would, rank, like, He'd start out. three other businesses. But he'd be he burnt could. out. F fine. It's all, it's all about deciding but, but what you could, want. He could start three other businesses with his system. I, see, I don't, I don't teach that the hustle and grind doesn't work because it does work. Yeah. There's living proof that the hustle and grind works. With a system. What I teach is that there, there's there's another way it's called ease and flow there you go and, and, and most people that. you know most people have 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 traded the rat race for the hamster wheel they're like oh i don't i don't i don't have a job anymore i'm, I'm self-employed no you you just own a job yeah. Yeah, can we agree most people that are lazy and they are hamsters and they belong in a wheel like how many truly people I, so any in I, any event i want to take it to i want to <laughs> take it to our viewers are you not doing everybody's an entrepreneur no man you're unique i, I want to take it to our viewers viewers are you doing the hustle and grind or do you want to do the ease and flow please subscribe 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 press the button below and then also write in the comments hustle and grind or nolly's ease and flow oh, we got nolly, i already we got a lion in sheep's clothing here guys <laughs> there's, there's no ease and flow I, pro you. I promise you someone comes out and that sheep clothing comes off and roar Nolly, it was great. It was great having you on our podcast. Thank we appreciate you. I'm gonna, your I'm gonna, I'm gonna email you and let you know what I think when your book comes out. I promise you, I'm gonna read it. And we look I forward to it. we look Thank forward you. to having you again. Have fun in uh, Puerto Rico. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks for having Thank me. It's been solid, gentlemen. Thank you. And remember, right. everybody, if you visualize it, you can own it. See you next Thanks, time. Thanks, guys. Bye.